Welcome to the Entertainment Podcast by The Vitamin Q. VQ TV. We are reviewing American Horror Story um, Apocalypse, the premiere tonight. I, I kind of liked it. Uh, I had to put on purple. Um, don't have much gray. But, you know, we're going to get to that later, what the purple signifies, of course. But let me just get some background music here because I can't talk or fuck without any background music. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it just becomes awkward. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, cool. Okay, so American, um, I, I liked it. Personally, you know, like personally, like throw it, throw it in the comments how you felt about it, just your reactions, um, if you loved it or hated it. Um, for me personally, I thought it was a strong launch, strong beginning. We'll start with the we'll start with the story. The story starts with you know, like hey, they're getting news news announcements that the bombs are get, being dropped. Um, we got Coco, she's the rich heiress, and um, she's in L.A. And, you know, we've got the other boy. We don't quite know where he is, but we know he's graduating from school and, you know, he's ready to go off to college until um, Coco, when she hears the bomber drops and her dad's like, hey, get your ass on the plane. We're getting you out of here. We don't have enough time. Good luck. Um, the boy, he's he's actually approached by, you know, what's called the um, corporation or no, what what is it called? Um, the co-op. So yeah, the cooperation, whatever. Um, it's an invisible force right now. Sounds very Illuminati-ish, but um, you know he comes there and, and they're told that he's being taken away because he's you know genetically tested to survive. Um, now when we start talking, when when we say the words genetics, because of his genetics and you know like and we got the armed black you know guys in blacks coming to get him, it does remind us back to season three's coven where. Um, when Zoe killed that boy with her vag, you know, through sex, that, you know, like the co-op came and got her too. So, is the co-op run by witches? We don't know yet. But, um, you know, like fast forward to that, they take him to a bunker, and then they, t you know, like until the bomb goes off, and then they take him and another girl who said that she was in jail at the time for protesting at college. Um, they take them off to Outpost 3. Now that they, they tell us that there are 10 outposts around the world. Now, at this, you know, like, American Horror Story, you know, like, the past couple of seasons, they've always been kind of shady or whatever like that one. But this one gave us a nice, direct lore story to start from. Like, everything's destroyed. Everything's gone. Um, we've got 10 outposts, you know, and the only people in it are, like, by the, the rich or the people that they've chosen to be, like, Hey, this, these are people are the genetically superior. Now, what does genetically superior mean? We don't know yet, um, but I have a feeling that it does mean something um, having to do with like having the witch genes and stuff like that, because we know that this is going to be a cross between um, Coven and Murder House. Um, Tyrone brings up the fact that, you know, we had Joan Collins. So let, let's talk about the cast for a second. We have um, we have the the new the two newcomers, so we haven't seen them. So that's good to get some fresh faces because um, some of the other faces are a little used. And then um, we had on the plane, we've got Coco. And we have my boy Evan Peters, you know, that's White Bay. He's been with us since the beginning. But then, uh, I mean, Joan Collins was an um, amazing addition to the cast. Um, we, Jessica Lang, she is back this season, but you know, she's been gone for a couple of seasons. So, but I think Joan Collins is just right in there with that, you know, on her level, like just what, you know, that white diva type. So, um, I think she's going to be a good addition. Like she's in her whole Alexis Colby type mode. I was very impressed with, um, usually they don't introduce you to the cast in a way that you're like, oh, okay, like you feel like you need to watch two or three more episodes to even find out who they're talking about. So this one, they like, I think in um, American Horror Story, they know what they're up against. They know that they've had a couple of weak seasons or a couple of seasons that have kind of alienated the base. So they went in, but people are still hanging in there. They're like, look, you know, give us back the Murder House um, American Horror Story. Give us back the Coven American Horror Story. I loved Roanoke as well. So, um, with that, we're also seeing, they're, they're, they're calling this kind of like Ryan Murphy's Infinity War. Where we're kind of, everything is going to start to tie together a whole lot more. And, you know, 
I'm not sure if he started out with a plan for, you know, like when, the, you know, a lot of the theories is, and Ryan Murphy even said, actually he posted this, that, you know, the seasons are based on the Dante's Inferno, his layers and circles of hell. So, you know, like a thing that was like lust and greed or, you know, something like that. So this one is... When you, when we get into there's very like dark and satanic and very omen like themes that are, that we're gonna be seeing in this one where it's it's literally like hey um, the best horror movie of ever um, of all is the best horror story to me is Revelations so if we're gonna have like the bombs going off and then we're gonna have the rise of the Antichrist I think that this was a really good place to start because I'm like well how are they gonna get the scale of like that the the world is gone I think they attacked it right off the bat. Um, good job with that. And, um, then everybody going to their bunkers. Speaking of, you know, black people, do we have a bunker? Cause you know, we not, you know, we don't have a ticket in that one. So, um, you know, when we get to the bunker, we find out that people are divided into two classes. You either have the purples or you have the grays and then the purples are the elites. Like, Hey, you're chosen to be here. We want you to continue the human race. Now, Throughout the episode, you kind of wonder what's the even pur the purpose of this even is is because they don't even have like enough food to get through the next couple of months. So it's, it, at first you're thinking that this is some big organized thing that's going on where they're taking care of these people, but now you're like you're hearing that three outposts um, were being overrun, and you know like they they only got three others left and stuff like that. So now you're kind of thinking like, well, how strong were they really prepared for this? You know like. <laughs> Yeah, Jessica, please go and um, brush up on your Inferno because Ryan Murphy did say that this, um, that his seasons were like based off of it. Now, um, what else? We got the purple and the grays. We got the no sex. We got the cannibalism in the first episode. And we got one of my favorite things is the outpost is run by, you know, um, Sarah Paulson, who's been in all of the themes and who, I'm, who I like. I really do think that she's a great lead for the series. She's playing... Um, Miss Venable, who runs Outpost Three, and Miss Venable, who you learn along with her, ca um, with Kathy Bates's character, they like, you know, like they like fuck the um, corporation or the consortium or who, the co-op or whatever the fuck it is. Like we run this shit now, and um, we we gonna get we about to do what we want to do, and you kind of see them saying like, you know, like these rules are being handed down from like. The visionaries, as they call them, the um, corporation is made up of the 12 visionaries. Can somebody please drop, drop the real name of that? I know it's not the corporation, but it's something like that. I had all of my notes. I was taking my notes in Evernote. And um, then I forgot that I'm going to, like, I, I thought that I would be reading my phone, but I'm doing a live with the phone and... I've been smoking and drinking and, and watching horror all night. So, you know, next time I'll be more prepared. But anyway, I'm winging it. There's not much to it. Um, they didn't give us much story, but we did get the introduction of Michael Landon, who was the baby in the very first Murder House um, horror movie. So that's going to really, that's the one where he's like born a spirit in man and he's going to be the Antichrist. So it's going to be interesting to, we, to see where they take that. I believe that the, I'm not, I'm like, I will say this about the first episode. I really do kind of feel like they're dropping a lot of like, um, predictive programming. Um, there it's very pale horse, very revelations, very Illuminati. And I, you know, just give us all of that shit. Um, when Satan rises, he's going to have, he's going to have a coven of witches with him. So. Is it going to be the coven from our, um, from season three? Or are they going to be the type of witches that are trying to keep him from doing, you know, like stop him from what he's doing? Um, you know, he's going to, he's going to, and when they say the 10 outposts, is, doesn't the, doesn't the beast have 10 heads? I believe that that was, the beast had 10 heads in that. And purple's a very significant color as well in, in Revelations, I believe. Either the, the Antichrist or the Beast or the Whore of Babylon was wearing purple. Um, you know, it just, everybody's scouring and turning on each other immediately to get to get to rescue after the bomb dropped. We won't have much time once they announce it. They're like, hey, this shit's coming. Like, 
in in um you know even touching on that as well one they even said you know like the world is it run by a bunch of different nations it was run by this consortium of 12 people um now 12 people is kind of like a coven because you got a, um, a dozen people you got 12 is the coven and then you got the antichrist who head who's the head of the coven so that's 13 which kind of goes back to the 13 bloodlines of the illuminati that they say are running the world so they were dropping a lot of that a lot of luciferian and um just very conspiracy like type of stuff in in lore which i hope that they build on um he came in trying to give us his best Lestat interpretation. Um, we'll have to kind of see where he's going with it. I really kind of like that picture that they had up. Um, let's see, I don't think it's, I don't want to turn it because my stand is just barely hanging on right now. But, um, you know, the, the witches come back. They say all of them come back. So I'm going to see my girl Queenie, the voodoo doll. Um, I think that they're going to have a big thing to do when you're talking about he literally is like the Antichrist. He's Satan. So, I don't know. You, you all rate it. Like, I got I, I got a couple people on here right now. If you're going to rate the premiere from a 1 to a 10, go ahead and throw in your number in the, in the comments. Also, let me know, um, are you going to be tuned in for this season? I remember when I saw Freak Show, I was like, no, nah, I think I'm cool on this. You know, I, I skipped out on that. And I just didn't participate. And um, after, you know, the seasons after that, I was kind of just like, you know, even though I kind of got into them, but I didn't get into them. Like, like I remember Murder House and Asylum and Coven. I used to be watching them when they came out. And now it's just kind of like, I'll just watch it when the season's over with. But now I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm intrigued to see where they're going, going to go with it, especially with all of the symbology from the trailer and stuff like that. Um, okay, Dana's got an eight. I'm intrigued. Eight and a half. Okay, that's where I'm at with it too. I think that they really hit the mood very well. Um, hopefully they don't stay down in that basement the entire time because I get very claustrophobic. It kind of reminded me of, um, if you ever watched True Blood, there was this season where all of the vampires stayed in this basement the whole the whole season. It just felt so claustrophobic. Um, okay. Voodoo dolls already already get putting it in the top five. Okay, Lola's saying and giving it a ten. Okay, cool. So it seems like, you know, I got my culture drivers who are gonna commit to this season with me, and I think that um we should really, you know, peel back and examine these layers because once the witches come on, um, that's when things really will pop off. And especially when we got the the rubber man from season one, he's coming back. Um you know, Lola, my, my sister loves green leaf, so maybe she should maybe she should come review a, a green leaf with y'all sometime. But um, it is late. I didn't want to. I didn't review want to review it too much. But I did. The only reason I was kind of committed to it is because I like I did enjoy. It. Like at the end of it, I was like, no, nah, I need more than this. You know. But American Horror Story also has a very long history of getting you into the middle of some shit and then just writing it as they go along and not knowing what the fuck they about to do um i, I want to see what joan crawford's gonna bring i can't i can't lie i mean i mean like i think that she's gonna really be giving it all season um you got people eating each other you know it, and it really what i you know i'll tell you this one reason why i really kind of stuck um stayed away from like cult the season that it came out is because it was around the time of the election or I think it was like right after. Yeah, it was like right after. And I just kind of felt like it was too close to home. Like, I'm like, I, I need my horror to be escapism. I don't I don't like horror based in, in real time. Um, and Ryan Murphy even said, he was like, this one is going to be more fantasy. It's going to be more supernatural. Cult was very reality based. There was no supernatural. He was like, but this, he's like, we're going to really bring it. So, um... I remember years ago, I, I, I read this mm -hmm. series of books, they were called the Left Behind series about what would happen if everybody just disappeared and, you know, Revelations was like a real thing. And um, it looks like American Horror is going to give us that in a less, like that, the, the book series was very like Christian based and it was very like good, like, ooh, God's going to win. But this, I just wanted to kind of go dark. Like, do we even know if God, if Jesus really comes back or, you know, if they're going to go along with that lore or whatever what's up ray so um look thanks for tuning into the review i had a good time um 
I'm a little d down right now because I've been drinking and smoking and watching horror and I, you know, I, I'm, sometimes you don't know where to put your emotions after a horror movie, you know, when no one's here to make you feel like everything's going to be okay, but I'm going to be okay, you know what I'm saying, mama's in there, um, you know, like I, I might just go talk to her for a little while until my nerves are settled, um, literally until, probably until she curses me out, but um, thanks for tuning in. We're going to stay on this show because I don't really have any other shows right now. Um, and I'd love to hear more of your reviews. I'm going to, you know, I might even do some blogs just to kind of share it among the whole, you know, American Horror Story has a lot of fans. So let's just, you know, the, I'll say this. When black people follow a, sh a show that has a mostly white crowd, we get pushed out of the, like, our voice and stuff like that. So let's just stay over here in our little corner and our little lane. And um, we'll um, review it from there. So, everybody have a good night. I'll see y'all next week. We'll um, we'll call ourselves the remnant because we're all that's left, you know. And I'm a purple, of course. Keep the grays away from you. Have a good night. <laughs>